So the first thing uh, I did remotely was with NK7U. A lot of you guys know Joe Rudy, and he ended up relocating out of Oregon, still wanted to have a station up. So he said, hey guys, let's remote it. So collectively we remoted it. Uh, we kind of learned the hard way on a lot of things. Some of that stuff wasn't available, we had to build it. Nowadays things are getting much more uh, off the shelf, I guess you could say. Uh, but there's several options, there's a lot of guys really doing some really cool stuff. So what's the difference between regular remote and no compromise? No compromise, you should feel like you are at the station with no other distractions. Uh, I can say after doing this for, I don't know, four, four or five years, I've done it, felt like that probably three times total. Uh, <laughs> so keep that in mind. Uh, it's definitely not as easy as it may sound. Uh, scores should be the same as being on site. If you're no compromise, you don't even want to be down 1%. Uh, if I'm up against you know, Dan somewhere, I know that if that 1% is going to make me lose, it, uh, it's going to make me angry because of that. Uh, now, if somebody beats me on other terms, that's different. But um, if it's because of my latency or something like that, that's not acceptable. No one should be able to tell you're remote. As we all know in this room, uh, that's not the easiest thing to do especially on CW. Phone is infinitely easier. Um, voice over IP has been around forever. It's reliable, it works. CW, for whatever reason, it's just complicated, and we'll get to that. Um, so the operator should be the only limiting factor. Of course, in real life practice, that's not what's going on here. So uh, I kind of jump around a little bit, but the biggest connection, the internet, and I know a lot of you are like, oh, that's blasphemy, this is ham radio. You're right, it is, uh, but if it's the only way you can get on, let's say you live in a city and you have a rural station, um, you gotta have some kind of a reliable connection. And it's very important to have both sides excellent. At NK7U, his last 14 miles or something was all RF. Uh, we struggled with that at times. He lived in rural Oregon, the site was on top of a mountain. And it ended up being excellent, but they had to replace hardware and the ISP had to upgrade. It was kind of a hassle. Um, pure speed is not the answer, you can get, you know, 100 meg service to any house in America on a cable modem on Friday night, Saturday night, your 100 meg service is not 100 megs and your latency is all over the board and everybody watching Netflix, playing games, they just ruined your run on 40 meters. <coughs> Ask me how I know that. I, <laughs> um, I live in a college town, it's a big deal. Um, most of these remote stations are not in the cities. By virtue of having a remote, you want it somewhere good, so that's a little bit less of an issue. But you want a consistent connection. Uh, I had a cable modem forever. It was okay. I had lots of problems. I actually downgraded to 10 meg DSL, which is kind of Stone Age, and I had way less issues. Um, one thing I found is the upload speed needs to be more robust than you think, um, which is kind of interesting because the data going up isn't that much. If you only have one meg upload, you're really limiting, especially on two radios. Uh, again, phone, much better on phone for whatever reason. Um, fiber DSL is the way to go. Most of these remote sites have fiber to the site, and uh, that seems to be the best. Of course, where I live in Montana, fiber optics is probably 35 years away, so that's not an option. Um, single op two radio, like I said, no compromise, very important. You have to have twice the bandwidth, and you're gonna wanna have some headroom there because things do change. Uh, like if my kids get on and wanna watch Netflix or something, yeah, not on weekends, sorry kids. Uh, daddy's on the radio. Um, there's a lot of stuff you can do behind the scenes. There's a thing called an IQ router, which I heard from somebody, I think K9CT has them. Uh, it's just a smart router that learns your patterns. It'll prioritize your computers and what traffic's going through. I was skeptical, but it made a huge difference. So if you're looking at remote serious contesting, definitely look at a better router, um, which none of this is ham radio. This is all, you know, techie internet stuff, so it's kind of strange for me. Um, don't connect your stuff up with Ethernet, or with Wi-Fi, excuse me. Uh, the extra eight milliseconds of delay and anything like that, it'll add up real fast. Uh, all my computers are hardwired up. Um, ro remote rig boxes are hardwired up. The Wi-Fi adapter is just not, it's not up to the task. Okay, you want, if you're, doing, if you're setting up a remote station, um, like at Joe Rudy's we had a lot of learning curves, you want everything remotable. PCs, power supplies, amplifiers, breakers, Absolutely everything, because if something goes down, you can't drive to the site and reboot it. Uh, again, we had a power switch, had a fault, and we were out of a commission for like two months before someone could get there. Little stuff like that will add up fast. You want a battery backup on everything. Um, of course, if your internet goes down, well, you do something else. Um, it's like losing an amplifier during the contest. 
it's just part of the game. Um, one thing about alpha amplifiers we learned is they have to have a full uh, unplug from the wall to reset them sometimes, and you can't do that remotely, so we had to get special um, cutoffs for that to completely kill the AC, um, which wasn't really documented that well, so that's kind of interesting. Antenna switching can be difficult, I'll get to that. But you know, you're sitting on a, on a, at home, and you got a manual switch, you push a button, whatever, it's great. Well, on remote, you're on a computer, you got a mouse, or maybe you have a touch screen, and it's just not as fluid and intuitive. So there's a lot of changes as far as user friendliness. Uh, the devil is definitely in the details, and we'll get to that. It's not the same for everyone. Um, oh, I'll show you guys. Okay, so what are you guys using to win? Like I said, this is what has I, I have found that people have used to win. There's all kinds of competition out there nowadays with pay to play kind of things or guys sitting up their own stuff. This is what I've seen that works and has been proven to work, excuse me. Uh, the remote rig boxes in the lower right, that's kind of the standard. They've been around for a long time. Uh, they work great. They have some limitations. They are not newest technology. Um, this is paired with the K3, kind of the de facto standard right now. Uh, that is changing. We'll get to that. Um, best I can tell for a private setup, this is a great way to go. Uh, NK7U, which we relocated to the K7ZS. Uh, near Portland, and N2QV has a huge station in New York that N5BX uses. This is their setup. This is what we use at Joe Rudy's. Um, it's it's great because the K3 Mini is you know it's just a head, so it's it's great, and you don't have to worry about not having the radio feel, which I'll get to. Uh, other guys like Remote Ham Radio uh, .com use this. Um, they are kind of transitioning to the next big thing, as all everybody is. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about that. We'll get to it. Um, App-based app systems, RHR does have this, where you can just log in and use it. Um, some of the other guys do that too. That is super cool for regularly getting on the air, not so much for winning contests, because it's just not, it's not functional enough. Um, as far as I can tell, every USA remote win has been done using this, which is kind of a big testament to the technology. I mean, it, it's quirky, but it works. So again, there's lots more options out there. Um, you can use any radio, which is big. The K3 is easy because they did a great job integrating it. K3 is, of course, a great radio. Um, it doesn't break the bank. You can have multiple things. It's, it's great. Um, true big knob experience with a remote rig box is, is very important. Setup, if anybody has ever used one, it's not intuitive, I guess you could say. Once you do it two, three, four thousand times, you get it pretty well. Um, <laughs> virtual com ports, I tell everybody you have to have a master's degree in virtual com ports. If you turn your computer off, something happens, and you reboot it back up, there's about a 50% chance it's coming up the same way. And when it doesn't come up the same way in the middle of a contest, it's not fun. Again, <laughs> very uh, very uh, quirky part of a remote as of today. Um, the biggest con is it's older technology. Things are changing. It's not being updated yet. Um, I'm not sure he's working on it at all. But right now, it's the best option. Um, here's a picture of my old house, this was set up in the garage. Um, this is, you're not winning from Oregon. We're, we're not oblivious to that, but this was definitely no compromise. This is going into Joe Rudy's big station in, in Baker City. Um, the K3 minis, just like any, s if I had a set SO2R setup at home, it'd look just like this, uh, except that I had one monitor instead of three. Um, white triple C controller, you can use all your peripherals. SO2R, the only thing I use the SO2R box for is audio. Um, all of the CW keying and all that goes through the remote rig boxes. Uh, they have some kind of a special algorithm that helps with the uh, jitters and stuff like that. It's not perfect. It's much better than using a wind tier on your remote side. Um, and we'll get to that too. But um, Yeah. Uh, the remote, or the key are in the remote rig box. It, it does, and Somebody here knows more than I do, but it has some kind of a data path that limits that. Um, one thing that's very important, since everything's on the computer, antenna switching, amplifier controls, for me, I don't want to lose focus on my log window and be able to type at the same time. So I can, I can send CW, change antennas, something on the other radio without losing focus on that main logging window. That's why I have three computers. Uh, the middle one is just logging, just like normal. The other two are actually Raspberry Pis. The only thing I run on there are either the internet browser when I'm on RHR or VNC to log into Joe's sites. 
Um, they work great. 65 bucks, no issues. Uh, they do overheat, so, you know, get a fan. But uh, if you're just logging in for that, it doesn't have to be anything extravagant. Um, I've got, he's got full rotor controls, uh, the amplifier controls, and there's a little bit of a lag, but it's not too bad. Um, if they're European calls and you're working JA, it's a little cumbersome to switch antennas, which there's a lot of work to be done in that area. That's just my personal preference. Um, end up getting lots of mice. There's actually four keyboards, one for each Raspberry Pi. Um, so it gets kind of complicated. You can see the three mice on the right-hand side. Sometimes you grab the wrong one. Um, <laughs> another cool thing, it, it's not on here, but uh, K7ZS set up a special VPN for us to remote uh, multi-op. And I don't get into a whole lot of that, but uh, we all log in, turn our VPNs on, N1MM connects to all of us. It's just like being on site with everybody. It's very cool. Uh, yes? Uh, it's, it's open VPN. Yep. Um, if anybody is interested in other stuff, I can give you some emails and links. Uh, Kevin is the guru. He, he does a great job. Um, anyway, the multi-op part is very cool. We'll get to that, too. It's a different experience for sure. Uh, so this is the remote side at K7ZS. This was taken a couple months ago. Uh, of course, the remote side is very clean. You're not going to be sitting at it. You know, it's just for maintenance or whatever. Um, all the switching and all that's on racks separately. Um, he uses this as part of his regular in-person uh, station sometimes. So it's actually more functional than they, than they could be. Um, he's going to set up to be a multi-two. And uh, right now they do multi-two in, in person, and then the other side is us remotely, so it's kind of a hybrid. So he's got the local guys and all of us log in um, also, which is kind of cool because we can all get on the same station. Um, so this is SO2R on the RHR network. Again, this is for stuff that's been proven. Um, this is my house currently. The RHR app is just like Joe's where you log in. Uh, you can see the antennas, the amps, some of the settings for the K3 are on there. I kind of just dis disregard that because we have the K3 minis. Um, the cool thing about that is there's not a lot of antenna diversity on RHR, but you can see where your antenna is pointed graphically, which is kind of nice. Uh, at Joe's, there's so many antennas, it's kind of overwhelming. Rough problem to have, I know. Uh, <laughs> but it's, it's pretty streamlined, and having the separate computers is essential. If you did it all on one computer, you'd drive you nuts with... Um, programs taking over the, the focus. Um, one thing that we noticed is on a closed system, there's no fail safe. So if a guy messes with the radio setting and you blow something up, there was nothing to stop it. Uh, the nice thing about these kind of public systems is there's fail safes. You're not blowing an amp up. You're not doing something stupid. And uh, it makes things last a lot longer. We've blown a few things at, at Joe's. <laughs> Um, this is N5DX into N2QV. So N5DX is Kevin. Kevin, he might have been the first guy to win something major remote, maybe. Um, Kevin is a hell of an operator, and he lives in Arkansas, remoting in N2QV. This is his setup. He sent me this picture uh, not too long ago. Just like everybody else, K3 minis and the remote rig boxes. And he's got a cool proprietary software where Everything's running at N1MM, and the rotors and the antenna controls are integrated with keystrokes. Uh, it's very slick. Um, other guys are doing that with right log, which kind of, I guess, one person's doing that with right log. But uh, that's kind of the next big thing, I think. Um, so anyway, very streamlined. You can see Kevin's got his contest use only picture right there. Uh, for those of you who've done 48 hours, that's very important. Uh, oh, he has a 590 also, which, again, you can use on your radio. This is the N2QV side. N2QV has one of the biggest stations on the East Coast, and that's all Kevin's remoted into is that. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Everything else is just kind of off-site. Um, this is Nate's setup. Um, I think it's on your kitchen table. Um, he does a great job. Again, three compute PCs, very important. And he does one keyboard. I'm not really sure how. Um, but again, it's no compromise. He's got his SO2R box. It's just like he would set up normally in his shack. And uh, everything's the same. It feels the same. That's very important. Because after, you know, 40 hours and you're not, don't have the muscle memory to do stuff remote, it'll just crash on you. You, you can't do anything. It's mental gymnastics, as we say. Um, yeah. Uh, this is Ray W2RE set up at his house. Of course, he's got like 17 radios going here. Um, but the cool thing is the remote rig boxes, you can use any logging program you want. 
you can use any peripherals you want, and multiple guys can do different things on this. At, you know, I can log in and log off and log in and log off at different stuff, and nobody nobody notices. There's no configuration. Um, some of the other stuff's not quite as forgiving, or you're kind of locked into you know using a flex. You got to use a flex, which is great, but if you don't have a flex, you're kind of up a creek. Um, one thing about the K7ZS stuff, which is cool, is we can put notes on there for each other. So on the left-hand side, we have all the IP addresses for everybody on the network, so we can plug them in. You know, it's like, hey, 20-meter rotor stuck at 45 degrees, don't touch it. Um, you know, when you're using 160, make sure you use a tuner. Uh, that's part of the fail-safes. There aren't any, so if you blow something up, there you go. Um, this is pretty simple. Uh, you know, we've got he's got the eight-circle array for receiving on there, and... I mean, it's just like being at, a, at his big station, but it's all on the computer. You can see the rotors. This is all Hamation stuff, I believe, um, which is super impressive. Uh, you can configure absolutely everything you want, and there are touch screens for it. Um, some of those guys do have touch screens, and it's, it's just that much faster. Save a little bit of time. It's pretty neat. The alphas uh, have been working great. Any remote, any radio nowadays, or amp that's remotely controllable, I mean, it's pretty, pretty standard. Um, a lot of guys use the experts. They work pretty well. They're not totally legal limit. Um, the alphas are, are solid. Uh, some of the OMs, I think, are remotable. Um, the KPA 1500, of course, uh, you know, that's just, that's seamless with all this stuff. Uh, there's a couple of quirks with that, which we kind of worked out, but the technology's there. It's much easier to implement now, so you can have the same stuff and remote it pretty easy. Um, Anyway, multi-op, kind of interesting, different different beast. This is the RHR interface, and I think this might be the old one. It's a little bit updated now. But you can see uh, the antenna path. You know, I'm pointing to Europe on this picture. It's graphical. You can see it. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to look at your thing. You know, little screen. You can see, okay, I'm pointing to Europe. When you're remote, I mean, that's a big deal. You can't, you know, look at your rotor control right in front of you. Um, it's, it's just kind of a weird shift. Changing antennas or changing directions, a little more cumbersome. Um, he's got presets set up so you can point at the major directions. If I want to point due south, it's a little bit funky, uh, but it's, you know, it's not bad. But if you were at home, that would save you a few seconds. It adds up over time. Um, again, a lot of this behind-the-scenes fail-safe is very important, um, which, again, we learned that one the hard way. This is a picture of W9SN multi-op setup. Uh, they're using flex radios. At the beginning, I said we're not talking about stuff that hasn't been proven yet. This is kind of the next thing. Um, I've never used Flex remotely. I've used them in person. Uh, these guys are doing it um, from Maine and a bunch of other places. Uh, it looks pretty cool. Um, the Flex technology is neat. There's probably some quirks that I don't know about. I have not used it remotely. But in person, there's, there's a few things that are still being worked on. But there's a lot to be said for just having one cable instead of about 50 of them. And uh, setting it up and just letting it go. The waterfall is super cool. Again, it would take more bandwidth. So if you're limited on bandwidth, kind of have to play with that. But these guys are definitely starting the next evolution. Uh, these guys, remote ham radio, some of the other uh, independents are doing it. It's cool because you replace boxes with just one. Um, again, multiple computers probably way to go on that. Uh, I'm guessing. I haven't really delved into that yet. Um, but if you're not familiar with Flex, doing it remotely is going to be way different. Uh, there are other options, a couple of them. We talked about CW's keying. Some guys do like a VPN into the computer where everything's over there, your logging program, everything. That works just fine. It's definitely not no compromise. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that you can't do. Single up to radio box, stuff like that. It, two keyboards would be difficult. Um, it could probably be done, but it's not being done currently. So I don't go into it too much. The CW keying is 100% because it's all on site. There's no remote path. Uh, there's no bandwidth issues as long as you can see the screen. It's great. It's good for multi-ops when you're not running 200 an hour. Um, plus, guys can't really screw things up. There's nothing for them to touch and mess up, which is nice. Um, we talked about the software-only interface. It's not no compromise, but it's cool. Uh, I used to run one side with a N4PY software with an external knob. It was great, but changing frequencies, finding mults, it's just cumbersome. It's not 100% uh, yet. I guess it could be. A lot of that is just, for some reason, PC manufacturers don't care about ham radio, so their software is not made for that. 
Um, expect to see some interesting stuff in the future there. A lot of guys would like to just roll up with a laptop somewhere and plug into an outlet and uh, operate a contest. Some of you might think that's blasphemy also, but it's the future. Um, a lot of radios have a detachable head. The TS-480 has been popular for a while. It's a great option just for goofing around, but it's not contest grade. It's not no compromise, so I didn't really go over it. Uh, the Flex, is it the future of a remote? I don't know. They're the only ones really going for it big. Uh, hopefully, they look cool. Um, nothing external is required. Uh, the waterfalls, you, know, you either love them or you're just kind of like, okay, whatever. Uh, I think they're super helpful. I'd love to try them sometime uh, remotely. The big knob interface is very important for me. Um, if I'm operating 48 hours and I don't know where the buttons are and I don't know how to turn my RIT and I don't know how to do stuff, I'm losing. Um, that guy back there is going to lap, lap me. So not okay. Uh, again, this has not been proven to be no compromise winnable yet. I expect it to be at some point one of the major players. <coughs> okay, so why is CW so tricky? Uh, this is a lot above my head, but I don't know if you guys do the CWTs the last few weeks. I got about 6,000 emails about my CW being bad. Yeah, it's fixed. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for the record, he didn't say it that nicely in email. <laughs> um, the biggest issue was not being on site, not being able to change settings. It was actually the K3 QRQ setting on the KPA 1500 um, and the, the delay and stuff like that. I didn't have access to that. We didn't even think about it. It was never an issue before. New piece of equipment never been tested. Got it figured out. Took about three different CWTs to get it ironed out, but um, stuff like that's just the process is longer. So um, the remote rig box keying is much better than paddle sending. Uh, I think the remote rig boxes send some kind of special data stream back down there and it recreates on the other side, uh, which is definitely preferable. I think the flexes do that. Um, if you're sending with a paddle and you have any kind of a jitter or anything, it's really noticeable. Uh, I don't even plug the paddles in at home anymore. Um, which is big for me because I love sending with the paddle, but remotely it's just, y you're just asking for people to just complain. Um, and it only has to be off by two milliseconds for someone to notice it. Um, <coughs> sending remotely into your piece, into the PC, like VNC, having it all on the remote control side or the remote side, of course, solves that problem. Like I said, it's, no com it's not no compromise. Um, on phone, much easier. On the K3, the built in DVK. Hit F1, it just calls a memory up on the remote side, you're good to go. Uh, voice over IP, for some reason, it works much better, whatever you know, algorithm they have going for that, it's great. I don't think I've ever heard anybody on phone going, oh, they're on remote, it just doesn't happen. Um, using the DVK in the rig is, of course, much better uh, for your bandwidth. If you're doing two radios and you're transmitting on one side of you know, voice over IP, the other side might suffer. So using the built-in DVKs is very important. Um, and nothing special required for that. It's very easy. Uh, I don't go into digital contesting. I don't know if guys are remotely digital contesting. I imagine it's kind of made for that. Um, that's just not my thing. So anyway, CW, very tricky. Um, yes. Uh, it was terrible. <laughs> it's just one of those things. Um, some guys have had better success than others, like the YCCC box wind keyer in there. It's it's just unre it's not unreliable. It's inconsistent. So um, now, what does that mean for operating? Latency and jitter is going to increase your error rate for sure. Uh, guys are not going to call you. Guys are going to dupe you. They're going to lower your rate. You're going to go back to them. They're not going to hear you. It's going to slow you down. If you're doing TB TBS IQ, you're going to repeat it on the other side. It slows you down. You don't want to sound like that guy, and sometimes you do. Um, so the whole point is to not reduce your score. That is the biggest thing that will reduce your score. Uh, in the CWT, I can always tell if I, my CW goes bad because all of a sudden guys aren't calling. Uh, hopefully that's fixed, but very important. Uh, the gray line map, something very simple. I live in Montana. If I operate in Maine, man, I'm getting up really early for that sunrise opening. <laughs> um, it's, it's definitely a mindset change. Uh, I know Tree and 6TR did sweepstakes from India one time, remoted into a station. That would just kind of <laughs> be tough to kind of visualize in my head. Um, anyway, you have to think about that. You know, Operating from Maine, if it's 1900 Zulu, I'm doing something way different than I would normally. 
And it's different being on site. You can see it out the window, the w sun's coming up, you kind of get a feel for it. Remote contesting, yeah, it's lunchtime. Oh man, I'm on 80, oh, that's kind of cool. All right, <laughs> it's different, it's different. Um, it's not hard different, but it's just kind of strange. Uh, it's very important to you know, do your strategy. I don't know if you're like me, I like looking at old logs, talking to guys, see what, what works the best. Uh, I've only operated from the East Coast a couple of times, all remote, I guess one time in Boston, but uh, I had to do a lot of investigation. I don't know what to do. I guess you work Europe all the time. Turns out that's what you do, you work Europe all the time. <laughs> Which, one point, it's actually not as exciting for me from the East Coast as it is from the West Coast because you're not getting that whole gamut of DX, you know, you're not running JA. You're not running Europe on 15 and then running JA on a different band. You're just running Europe on all bands. I was like, yeah, I worked at JA on 20, now I'm on 80. So, kind of different, remote, you get a different experience without having to travel there, which is kind of cool. So. Definitely strategy ahead of time, <laughs> very important. Uh, this is best I can tell, USA Remote wins. Uh, one thing about N5DX, he did a couple of those on site at N2QV, and he won some other ones, but the reputation is remotable. Obviously it works, uh, WPXCW, IARU mixed, and then CQ160. He did win CQ Worldwide and AWRL, I believe, from that station, it just wasn't remote. Um, W2RE uh, won quite a few phone contests. Uh, I just won a couple, and N4YDU's been remoting uh, also. And when I say wins, I mean just USA wins. I'm not talking about European or anybody doing DX stuff. Um, there's guys working on it, but this is the best I can tell. If I missed one, I apologize to those guys. Uh, but that's pretty impressive, 16 remote wins in three years. Love it or hate it, this is gonna happen. Uh, I know the WRTC qualifying, regions W1, W2's all together. Um, everybody on this page is gonna be operating in the same region against all you guys that have a station in W1 and W2. I apologize. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> uh, I don't know who's trying to go, but I know that if you need points, that's not gonna help. Um, of course, if nobody wants to go, yeah, what well, doesn't matter. So, that is a big difference. Um, but it's cool because I can sit at my house in Montana and either not be on the air, or now I can be competitive anywhere in the world remotely. And that's better for me, better for my family. It's more QSOs for everybody. It's a good thing. Um, anyway, I'll have a lot of time for questions probably. So the, the future for remote contesting, the Flex stuff, um, any of the software only options are probably gonna be big. There's a lot of work behind that. I don't know if anybody is interested in taking that on. Um, but the HOA guys like me, um, I live in a city that has HOAs 100% everywhere. There's no options for an antenna. Um, we can be competitive now. It's a big, it's a big deal. Um, for those of you that have your own stations, I'm jealous. Um, as it is right now, a lot of us can't do that. Um, if you're gonna buy your own station, you would just build rurally like you normally would. The expenses probably aren't that much more. Um, in some cases it could be less because you can buy a cheap piece of land somewhere else. The logistics will be harder with power and internet and stuff like that. Um, there's a lot of guest stop stations coming up for rent. Um, of course, RHR, the other guys are coming up. Um, and it's just like renting a station in the Caribbean. You know, you and your buddies fly down to KP2M, now you can sit at home and operate from Maine. Um, sorry to the guys in Maine that have stations. Um, it's just a thing. Um, anyway, it's not going away. <coughs> There's a lot of controversy about it. I get it. Uh, it's still RF to RF. Just the way you listen to the audio and stuff is not RF. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, feel free, email me, whatever, if you have any questions. Um, thanks to the guys for the pictures. Um, I know it's gonna get big at the end of this year. There'll be a lot of remote stations on. So hopefully you can't tell they're remote. So that's it, thanks guys. All right, we got some questions over here.
Well, we ran into that. He asked about poor internet service on the last mile at the end. Uh, where would I go next? Well, I wouldn't do satellite. Um, like I said, at Joe's, he found a way to get the guy to upgrade his, his equipment. Um, if there's nothing available, I, as far as I know, you're kind of, that's kind of is what it is. I have not. I know the RHR guys do. One of their sites feeds another one. Uh, that would be a question for one of them. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so I'm looking for one myself. I don't want to remote it, but I want to have the option. Um, where do you live? Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City, okay. Um, pretty rural, I imagine, where you're looking. Not really? Okay. The biggest thing I would say is um, you want to have that internet connection reliable. That's the biggest one, hands down. Uh, if you have any power outages, you might have a backup generator. Um, we see that, you know, the power goes out, you're dead anyway. But if it comes back on and nothing's back up, you're, you have to go to the site to get it turned back on. And then battery backups. But as far as looking for a site, you want something that you can get to in, a, in an emergency, I guess, because it happens. Yeah. Yeah, so at Joe's, uh, his son lived there. So if we had a problem, his son could go over there and work on it. That helps. Uh, the farther away you are, the harder it is. I know some of the other guys have hams in the area that are willing to help out. Like, hey, man, can you go turn my amp back on kind of thing? Or go see, reset my router. That makes a big difference if it's available. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that being sticky. Yeah. As, as long as they're close enough to help you out, I think you're fine. Yeah. Yeah, good point. Yeah. <laughs> yep. From the logger? Well, it so the the keyer and the RSC is just on a virtual COM port, and I just use that as my keyer. Um, I guess maybe I don't understand the question. No? It's just like in DX log, my key, there's a com extra port on the remote rig box, and that's my keyer port, and it goes to the remote rig box on the other side. So instead of going to the win keyer, I go to the remote rig keyer port. Yep, yep, yep. TV Bob? It was the uh, delay timing on the amp relay. Yeah, we had to put it in QRQ mode. Um, which I didn't even know was a thing still. So it went from Tara, it went from GD's email to excellent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, but I could get one. Um, as far as like the NK7U stuff, I was definitely more of a user and a, and a suggestion guy. Like, hey, you know what we should do? All right, thanks guys. Um, but K7ZS is really good at documenting that kind of stuff for a future. Yeah, so latency, if I can ping a site, uh, and I'm not super savvy with this stuff, if I can get it under 100, it's not too bad. Um, typically, like to Joe's place, we were sitting about 55. Uh, to the main stations, I think I'm at 65, which is fully acceptable. Um, as far as upload, download, I went from 10 meg down, one meg up, and now I have 40 meg down and 20 meg up, and it's that's where I'm gonna stay. Um, again, the the dedicated upload and download speeds are more super important. Cable modem's not gonna cut it. Oh yeah, uh, sometimes it'll spike to 200. I haven't seen that in a long time, and you can notice it. But if it's if it's just for a few minutes, it's not too bad. Yep. I certainly don't know any, but I know a guy who does. Um, we 
they definitely went through that battle a couple times. Um, K7ZS is the guy to ask about that. It's all at his place. Yeah. What was, where do you find it? Yeah, it's on Amazon. I think it was like 149 bucks. That's not too bad. The IQ router? Yep. Do you guys have one? Yeah. Uh, it I was skeptical. You know, their website's kind of vague. It worked. Made a big difference. And it'll email you if you have problems on your line, um, y and you can test it all remotely. It's kind of nice. Uh, yep. So there's multiple, like there's, there's remotehamradio.com, there's Be Loud, there's remote, remote something, an old school one. Remote hams, that's the one I'm thinking of. They've been around a long time. Um, it's kind of a conglomeration. Um, I think those are the only ones that are around that I know of as far as sites for one person to get multiple sites. You're doing it at different sites? That's kind of cool. <laughs> it's not allowed in a contest. <laughs> yeah, it's, if it's, it's going to fall outside the circle of acceptable um, you know, station, but it's cool. I always joked I wanted to do one station in Maine, one station in Oregon on a CWT, just because. But as far as entering a, a real contest, it's not allowed. Yeah, and actually multi-op was a lot easier. You just have two independent stations like you normally would. I, you just duplicate everything. And then the biggest challenge was the computer network. And the VPN solved that. And it, it wasn't trivial. But now if a new guy comes on, Kevin sends him a key. He's in the system. He's in the group. Fire up N1MM. And it, it literally just comes up in, in seconds. And you can gab. You can see their radios on the bands. Um, it'd be just like in a room of multi-ops talking to the guys next door. Um, that's the only difference I see, multi-two, multi-op. Yeah. Yep. Yes, big time. Well, the difference between cable modems, Wi-Fi, and uh, fiber. The slowest, it gets, depends what your description of slow is, Anything wireless is going to have more latency in it. Um, the speeds can get be pretty high. The cable modem has a Netflix effect. It's, it's too up and down. Uh, the fiber, as long as it's dedicated, it's the way to go, in my experience. Yep. Yes. Yeah, as, as long as it's, I guess the jitter is maybe the correct term. Um, but correct, that's why it's hard. I mean, the timing is, is so so small. Yep. Uh, not for no compromise remote contesting. It's not fast enough. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not 3G or 4G. It's it's dedicated. Go ahead. Yeah, as long as it's something like that, you're golden. Um, but just a regular cell network's not going to work. Yeah. Yep.
Yeah, I got you. So he, he, you know, we have three stations going. So everybody that's on each radio is connected on the network for logging and all that stuff. That's the big advantage of the VPN. Otherwise, we used to share logs. All right, I'm off the radio. I'm going to email you the log. Load it up. Now it's your turn. Yeah. That's old school way. <laughs> yep. Yep, that's why it, that's why we do it. Any other questions? <laughs>